There's a reason why modern battles are heavily influenced by who can win and maintain control of the air over any given battlefield. Despite the spotlight of Battletech being placed on the mechs, air superiority is still a thing that a good commander should be looking to achieve. As we don't have access to aerospace units, Rogue Tech, you'll have to make do with VTOLs if you want an aerial presence. You are probably thinking that VTOLs are expensive. You're right, of course. Piecing together disparate parts can be a hit to your wallet, and that's before you consider the opportunity cost of just selling the parts for cash instead. The last time I sold an Afrit part, I think I got in the neighborhood of 400000 which is about what you would pay to batch a different model piece together in reconstruction. But before you just go bending those flyers, let's run a comparison. I'm going to use a mech for this, because of the sheer difficulty in finding a commiserate tank during the career. It's far easier to build a mech to specification than find the right ground-bound V. So, let's take a 45-ton Nidhogg here for comparison. This VTOL has an 812 movement profile, 200 plus armor in each of the four quadrant locations, and a Guardian ECM. That's before you get to the loadout variants. If we were to attempt to recreate this machine in a mech, we'd start with a 45-ton unit, say, a Phoenix Hawk. The standard Hawk runs a 270 engine to go 69, which is a fair bit short of the 812 the Nidhogg offers. So we would need something like a 360 engine to get that kind of speed out of the mech, excelled of course, or we'd have no hope for armor or weapons. Toss on some Indo and Ferro to save a bit more weight, and you have a decent starting point, but not much in terms of critical slots. Just the installation is going to run you roughly 1.5 million C-bills. The XL, the engine core, the armor and structure, another million in parts, assuming you have such a big engine laying around. Blake help you if you need to buy that engine from the shop, and we haven't even added weapons yet. Not to mention that even a fully armored Hawk won't have nearly 200 armor per location, and you are running the risks associated with the XL. The price to recreate in a mech what the Nidhogg offers is significant. In fact, it's even more expensive to field the mech than the VTOL. But perhaps you are flush not just with victory but with cash, and the extra investment is easily brushed off. So why a VTOL instead of a ground pounder? The fact that a VTOL flies cannot be overstated. You will always have access to that 812 movement profile from the Nidhogg, momentum and G-suits allowing of course. You don't need much experience in game to realize just how much crap is scattered around the battlefield for you to wade through. And then there's the forests, rocks, and swamps too. You won't be seeing 10 plus hexes travel from that Phoenix Hawk very often, and if you want to add jets to help with terrain, well, there goes another 3-5 to five tons in equipment. Meanwhile, the hog ignores all of these hazards with a resounding thump thump thump. Just turn the bass down on your speakers or position the camera a slight distance away to save your eardrum. You should already be climbing hills with your mechs when possible in order to improve your accuracy and gain vision of the surrounding countryside. This benefit is innate to a VTOL. Information gathering is an important role on the battlefield, and being able to skirt the edges of an engagement while getting a clear picture of the enemy's battle line is quite useful indeed. By knowing the exact disposition of your enemy, you will be able to make a well-informed decision on how your company needs to deploy, and which units need to be destroyed first. By having flight, the VTOL retains the ability to dash into the fray from an external scouting position to deliver a devastating strike, or to give supporting fire from far away, avoiding reprisal. Nor should you forget the utility that a VTOL can bring to the battlefield. ECM can protect your units or jam your enemies, and if you find those mechanics confusing, I have a video here that will help. Several variants also bring AMS to the field, and the ability to park in close proximity to their missile throwers will protect your entire company, a serious value. And then there's the relatively simple yet oft-overlooked ability of the VTOL to cross from one side of the battlefield to the other in just a turn or two, taking advantage of an enemy weakness or shoring up your own line. The versatility of the VTOL is part of what makes this unit so powerful in the hands of an agile-minded commander. That's not to say that there aren't any downsides to running VTOLs. The fact that it's always in the air makes it an inviting target, and unless you spend a lot of time ducking buildings, cover from such enemy fire will be rare indeed. If you spend most of your time zipping around at maximum speed, you'll mitigate quite a bit of that threat, but don't underestimate the effect of 30 guns going off in your direction. This shit ain't the 4th of July. That's America's national excuse to blow shit up day, for those of you in the rest of the world, though if I was keeping score, I might call it Darwin's Day. Anyway, the net effect of such firepower headed in your direction will result in hits, even through high evasion. This is the primary reason the lighter units are so fragile once you get into 3 skull and above missions, upon which time I would be looking to upgrade to Nidhogs or Seth Bombers. You'll need to keep an eye on your armor condition in battle, and face weakened sections away from enemy fire lest you find yourself paying death benefits. This can be tough at times, 
as most of these units have fixed weaponry that will necessitate a frontal facing in order to deal damage. Also, don't be afraid to hit and run with these machines, or even just run. Truly, a VTOL that did some scouting for the rest of your company, ate a few volleys, and did a bit of damage is a net win for your unit. There's no need to press it into dangerous situations unnecessarily. While I believe the VTOL to be quite cost effective versus building, and especially rebuilding, a comparable scout mech, continuous losses will drain your bank account, so you might want to use them cautiously until you gather some more experience. Still, you should absolutely look for chances to poop shoot heavier opponents, especially with the variants that have the ability to pick a moment to really unload. Quite a few of the VTOLs in game, the Nidhogg and the Seth Bomber in particular, don't exist in classic Battletech. The designers have included them as toys for us to play with, and boy do they deliver! Hopefully, I've shown why you should consider using some flyers on your next drop. Thump thump, baby.